this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. And what was one of my favorite, if my very, not my very favorite gaming, affordable gaming laptop for last year, that was the Dell Inspiron 15 Gaming 7559. Well, now we have the new updated version for 2017, Dell Inspiron 15 Gaming 7567, part of the 7000 series, the gaming line, so it doesn't look like the other Inspiron models. So last year, for a price well under $1,000, you guys said it was pretty capable for gaming. I know you're not killer. It's not going to beat the pants off of Dell's own Alienware machines, but pretty darn good. So this model right here, definitely a redesign. And I like the look. It's very Alienware reminiscent. I will talk about that. But the one thing people are wondering about is the display. How bad is it? We're going to find out now. Well, the first thing that strikes you about the Dell Inspiron 15 Gaming Edition here is the zingy little red sports car look, which I like. I mean, you know, I like gaming laptops that look like gaming laptops, but this one's kind of tasteful and coherently designed. But don't worry if you don't like the soft touch red finish. It's also available with soft touch black finish. There are some red accents on it, but it's nothing too, too much. But once you get beyond that, wow, look at that red. Notice how thin it is. It's one inch thick. That's really pretty thin for a gaming laptop, even a mid-ranger. And also notice how much it's actually reminiscent of the latest generation Alienware 15 that we reviewed. And you can tell, funny thing, they're both made by the same company. And that's a good thing. It's a good influence on the Inspiron Gaming Edition here because it's a, it's a nice slab kind of clean design. And we have the display forward hinge. You, you can see right back here where the display pops up from there. And if we open it up sideways... You'll see, it's not as pronounced because it doesn't need as much of a big fan assembly compared to an Alienware because those have hotter GPUs, graphics inside, than this does. But it's, uh, it's kind of neat, and it's just an attractive look. You've got the dished-in keyboard, which is good. It drops down a little bit, so that's ergonomically comfortable. Soft touch in here, not so much really soft touch as in matte plastic. That's got good traction. Keys, obviously they are red, and so the backlighting when it's on is red. You're not going to get RGB backlighting here. Power button even kind of reminds me of something that Alienware would come up with. You do have a number pad here and a little bit of separation that helps a little bit. So gaming laptops, folks like to have number pads, so keep are navigating around. Clean deck here, nice modern looking trackpad. The, the surface on the trackpad is a kind of a little bit rough, feels plasticky. It's okay, it's no Dell XPS 15 precision keyboard kind of feel, uh, trackpad rather. But it's, it's decent, it's not one of my favorites, but it's not as terrible as say Asus's trackpads or MSI's are in general. If we close it and take a look at the back again, it's kind of like the budget version of an Alienware, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's a simpler look, but you're not going to get the fancy grill work and all that sort of thing. You've got a pretty simplified version of the grill look over here with the gray plastic surrounding it. It's nice enough looking. And the bottom is matte, and it says Inspiron. If I flip it around, it'll even say Inspiron in a way that you can read it. There you go. And the beauty is to open this up, all you do is remove one screw, and I'll show you the internals in a minute. Subwoofer here, ventilation over here really good speakers, really loud, rich, full speakers on this. Every bit as good as the Alienware 15, better than the Asus Rogue GL553V we just reviewed, and even the GL502, which is the higher end. The speakers are just kind of anemic lately on those. And MSI's 15-inch laptops have decent but not amazing speakers. The bass on this is really very pleasing. If you play something Far Cry 4, which has that wah sound at the beginning, it really will wah. Sounds pretty cool. So just like with the last gen Inspiron 15 Gaming, this thing is so easy to open up. Don't you wish they were all that way? I mean, gaming laptop enthusiasts like to be able to open things up and upgrade parts and maybe even clean the fans, repaste the CPU. One screw, one captive Phillips head screw. Captive means that when you unscrew it all the way, you'll just hear a click, a click. It doesn't come out. It makes it harder to lose the screw. So do that, and then you got to reach and yank a little bit. Helps if you have some fingernails. And you'll feel the plastic clips just snapping off. It's maybe a little bit traumatic, but it's okay. It's not going to break. All right, we're inside here. Two fans. It's interesting. After we just did the Asus Rogue GL553 that may do with one very large fan, this does the more traditional thing, and it has two fans that exhaust out the rear. So right here is the battery, 74 watt hour. This is your hard drive bay. Obviously, we don't have a two and a half inch hard drive or two and a half inch SSD installed, but you got the connector right here. They have it scotch taped down so you don't hear it rattling too, too much. Uh-oh, look, 
it got disconnected. Well, there's where it connects, right there. That's the nice thing about Dell. Everything on the motherboard is labeled, and they tell you the screw sizes and all sorts of other handy things here. So you've got this connector if you need it. Here is your M2 SSD slot right here. Obviously, we have a drive. Ours happens to be a SanDisk in here, and this is the RAM right there, DDR4 RAM, and you've got two slots, the top one they populated, there's another set of ears back here, so you can put two in, maximum would be 32 gigs if you used two 16 gig module. Ours ships with 8 gigs of RAM, which pretty much all of the Inspiron 15 gaming laptops do. This is the Wi-Fi card over here if you ever want to upgrade it, because that is a pretty low-end Intel card if you're not thrilled with the performance. Here's your subwoofer right here. Like I said, great audio on this, really pretty impressed with that. And a lot like the Alienware, again, you can see the design influence. So all that stuff is pretty accessible, right? And even though we've taken off the whole bottom cover, if you actually wanted to get, see, you can barely see the heatsink pipes here. If you want to do a repaste or something like that, you'd have to remove this frame. There's a lot more Phillips head screws and remove this back grill cover over here to actually get to that stuff. It's not the end of the world. It's not that difficult. It's not something that you would do that often, if at all. But worth noting, it's just very reminiscent of Alienware design. So what is the Dell Inspiron 15 Gaming 7000 series? It's Dell's reasonably speaking, affordable mid-range gaming laptop. That is, the price starts around 750 bucks. Last year's model really loved it. A lot of bang for the buck. Obviously, you're not going to get super duper high-end specs here because, well, for $750 starting price, you won't. And really nicely configured, you're looking at around $950 or so. If you want the Core i7 in this, if you want the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti upgrades. Now, the, the lower end model, in fact, we have one that's relatively speaking towards the lower end. It does have the, the GTX 1050 Ti versus the 1050 on the base model, but we have the Core i5, and, but it's a quad core 45 watt Core i5, so much more powerful than Ultrabook CPU. It's the i5 7300HQ clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. You can get this in the base model, it just has a hard drive, a two and a half inch spinning conventional hard drive, and of course there's upgrades available so you can get an M2 SATA SSD in there, or you can just upgrade yourself. And as you saw, it's so easy to open up, and you can do these things afterwards if you want, especially if you're spending all your money up front just to buy the laptop, and you know you got room to grow later. Swap in an SSD, even improve on the Wi-Fi card, because they're using Intel's low-end 3125AC card. Performance on that, throughput on that, eh, not so good. Even Asus and their competition with the Rogue GL553VE that we just reviewed is using a last-gen Intel card, but at least it was a high-end, the 7265 AC. I'd rather have that over this, meh, you know, not super great performer here. The good news, as you saw, also is you can go up to 32 gigs of RAM if you want, since you have two RAM slots, DDR4, 2400 megahertz RAM inside. Your usual 720p webcam on board. Plastic chassis, yes, but very stiff, very rigid. It feels like quality. It feels like it's something that's going to hold up. So all is good there. The keyboard travel is pretty short. I'm not in love with it, but it's still quite usable. I just prefer something with a little bit more movement. Now, since this is a mid-range gaming laptop, it doesn't have the real hot GPUs inside, literally, physically get hot GPUs, so temperatures aren't bad. The bottom will get pretty warm, but not burning hot. That's the price you pay for something that is only one inch thick or thin, depending on how you want to look at it. CPU and GPU temperatures well controlled. The fans, the dual fan design here, it, you'll hear them. They're, if you're just doing productivity work, that sort of thing, you won't hear them, which is typical of quad-core laptops. But when you're gaming, you will hear them. They're not obnoxious, they're not high-pitched, but there's plenty of volume there. Not enough that you have to wear headphones, though, so it's not too, too bad. It is louder than the Asus, again, Rogue Strix GL553 competitor that we just reviewed. Uh, that one has a single, much larger fan, and it's a quieter kind of design. Ports are pretty ample on this, as you would hope and expect. And, you know, you're not going to get cutting-edge things like Thunderbolt 3 in this price range, and that's fine. That's fair. You have Ethernet, Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, USB 3.0 ports. You get three of those, and you have an SD card slot. Yay. And, of course, the usual... Kensington lock slot on. So it's pretty much prepared for anything you need to do. No high-end stuff like this display port either. But again, in this price range, I'm totally cool with that. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the display. A lot of you are watching this mostly because you've read that the display is eh, and the rest is pretty good. 
Well, that would be the nicer way of putting it. The the full HD 1920 by 1080 TN panel that is the default for almost all shipping models of this, except for the high end bundle. We'll talk about that again. Um, <laughs> This desktop picture here, for those of you who've watched many of our reviews, you know, this is a photo I took and it has very rich saturated colors and they really pale. Not to mention the fact that the colors are kind of wrong. The calibration on this is so far off. The Delta E is so bad. It's just phenomenal. I haven't seen anything this far off in a long time. So I calibrated the display and I'm going to show you with calibration on. It's going to get a lot more accurate, but it's going to look dimmer, which is why I think that they probably shipped it with the calibration the way it was. Now the colors are more pleasing and more rich there, yeah? And, you know, if you're looking at a picture or a game, and this is a gaming laptop, it's not so bad, but let's bring up some white windows. This is where it gets to be like hard to see because, because there just isn't a whole lot of contrast on the display. And it gets to be difficult to read it. And that's because it's a TN panel. Now there are different levels. It is the Alienware with the high refresh rate TN panel that's available, that's quite good. They can be pretty decent looking, even though they're always going to be a little lacking in contrast compared to IPS panels. Now this is a disappointment because last year is Inspiron 15 Gaming, that we gave an editor's choice, loved it to death, so did everybody else, had an IPS panel. It wasn't the world's best IPS panel, which was totally fair for the price tag, but it was IPS at decent viewing angles. It too wasn't very bright. This is 228 nits, but it was, it was fine. It was passable for the price. It was perfectly good. This is just nasty, nasty, nasty. The, the black level on this is 2.81 according to our colorimeter. Now, usually we see black levels of 0 0.37, 0 0.46, 2.81. Wow, I have not seen that. That means the blacks just don't get very black. And the contrast ratio thus, since it's not very bright and the display can't get very black, is an abysmal 80 to 1. So this is why I'm dissing the display. Now, I would just say, fine, get it with the 4K display option. Nobody minds a little 4K love. It's a much higher quality display. But right now, Dell is bundling that with high-end configurations only. So that's about $12.99. When you're looking at spending $12.99, there's a whole lot of tough competition from ASUS with the Rogue GL502 VM, the lower end one with the 1060, a faster graphics card. You got the MSI Leopard Pro GP62. You have the cheaper ASUS Rogue GL553 V to consider. So in, that's when, you're, yeah, it gets a little bit iffy here. So the, the appeal of the Inspiron 15 gaming is really when you can get it for $1,000 or under. And I, so far, there are no bundles that include the 4K display and under a thousand. Hopefully, maybe Dell will start offering those. All right, now that we're all crying in our beer, uh, the good part is performance is good on this. It didn't quite match the benchmarks of the competing ASUS that I've been mentioning over and over again just because we recently reviewed it and it's such a direct competitor if you start looking at the higher end versions of the Inspiron 15. Otherwise, not because this is a lot more affordable if you get one of the base models. But ours just has the Core i5 and 8 gigs of RAM. It's not super duper tricked out. It does have an SSD, a SATA one, and with typical SATA speeds you can see there on screen. It performs pretty well and it was more, as so actually I got better performance in some games with, with this than I did with the ASUS despite the benchmarks. So one thing I had a problem with was the division running full screen for some reason. It just was a lot of work. It didn't want to go full screen. It windowed it was happy with. So you know, gaming laptops have their quirks and foibles, but benchmarks overall are close enough to the competition that it's pretty good. A little bit louder, but also typical of Dell and Alienware, it, the CPU and the GPU are also running a bit cooler, like eight to 10 degrees centigrade cooler. So for the longevity of the machine, I'll take that. When, when the CPU cores are running at 65 to 75, instead of definitely always at 75, on, like on some of the competing thin and light mid-range gaming laptops, that's a good thing. Never saw the GPU really go above around 61 to 65 centigrade. That's, those are very good temperatures right there. So performance is excellent on this and stability in games other than that little quirk with the division was also quite good and so were the frame rates and it did great on Unigine in Heaven which is always an indicator of how it will do in 3D games, 68.2 frames per second in Unigine and it maxed out at 65 centigrade. So it's, it's a good performer and the internals are keeping their cool despite the fact you'll feel a little warmth on the bottom. So it should hold up and last.
Battery life is another happy story here. This has NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics, so it can run on the GTX 1050 or 1050 Ti, depending on which configuration you get. We have the 1050 Ti. Or it can run on Intel HD 630 integrated graphics when you're not gaming, and so it's going to save you power there. And that combined with the 74 watt hour battery, which is significantly larger than the ASUS GL553, which kind of wastes space having an optical drive. I really would have rather they did what Dell did and put a battery in there. Well, battery life is really impressive. Easily, I got eight hours. And that's what the brightness set at 70% because the, bright, the display is not very bright. So I ran it brighter than usual. Mixed productivity and streaming video, that sort of thing. A little Photoshop thrown in, nothing heavy, super heavy lifting. It's fantastic. So if you're a student and you need this to last all day when you're at school, it can do that. So there you have it, the Dell Inspiron 15 gaming laptop. Inspiron, Dell, 2017 edition. Still a great buy for the money. It'll be interesting to see what Lenovo's new Legion line of affordable mid-range gaming laptops is going to do to kind of counter this. But lately, Dell has been doing pretty well. Again, for the price, really pretty good specs. The only problem is that atrocious display. Oi, oi. So there's an answer to that. Dell has the 4K display option, which is certainly not atrocious, but right now it's bundled with those high-end features that you might not be able to afford or even want, like the large capacity SSD, Core i7, you know, all those things come part and parcel. If they start offering different configurations where you can get, you know, a lower-end model with a 4K display, it becomes more compelling. Beyond that, <laughs> It's hard to really completely get behind it be just because of the display. This is the thing you're going to be looking at always. Unless you plan on using it with an external monitor a lot of the time, then hey, why not? Certainly you get pretty good performance of the money. Really nice build quality and Dell's good driver updates. There's stuff still in favor of it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.